Mr Guterres, as winter approaches, just how grave is the refugee crisis in Syria? Well, it is a mega crisis. We are talking about uh, 3.2 million refugees. We are talking about uh, 7.6 million people displaced inside the country. Uh, and uh, uh, people think that the Middle East is warm, but it's not true in winter. Some areas have snow, have rain and uh, negative temperatures. And so it's absolutely essential to provide these people with adequate winterization. Neighboring countries like Lebanon and Jordan have been very generous in accepting refugees from Syria. But are they approaching a breaking point? Uh, that is a big worry for us. And the need to mobilize the international community to provide a much more massive support to both Lebanon and Jordan. If you have Lebanon with probably one third of the population today, refugee, either Palestinians or Syrians. The impact in the economy, in the society. I was in a village with 3,000 uh, Lebanese, 5,000 Syrians, which means jobs become scarce. Salaries go down, rents go up, prices go up. People, poor people, live in much worse conditions. So massive support from the international community is necessary. Without that massive support, the asylum space for Syrians in the neighborhood will be at risk. The airstrikes against Islamic State in Syria and Iraq, are they worsening the refugee crisis in the region? The evidence is that uh, the uh, airstrikes, as they are localized and mostly in areas um, uh, that are not heavily populated, uh, that there is not a, a very uh, important direct impact on displacement because of that. You're here in Washington this week meeting U.S. officials. What are you asking for? Well, I think that there are two key aspects. First is humanitarian support. Uh, second is to look into the neighboring countries, and especially into Jordan and, and Lebanon, but also Turkey and, of course, uh, Kurdistan in Iraq, that is also struggling enormously with such a large number of Syrians and displaced Iraqis inside, and to uh, do everything possible to find a political solution for the conflict, because we humanitarians are no, long, no longer able to cope with the challenge, because the dimension became overwhelming. If you're overwhelmed and don't have enough money to care for all the refugees, which countries need to do more? I think all countries, uh, traditional donors, but also new donors from the Gulf, from other areas, uh, everybody is necessary to move development cooperation money into uh, the countries affected uh, by the crisis. And at the same time, uh, um, to make all possible efforts uh, for those that have an influence on the parties to the conflict. So you mean Russia, you mean Iran? I mean, I mean Russia, United States, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, I mean all the countries around uh, and of course the P5 need to come together to understand that this is a war that now everybody is losing. As a humanitarian who must pick up the pieces from the Syrian conflict, why is it that the big powers in the world can't resolve this problem? I don't think that uh, the big powers and the regional powers are doing enough to end the conflict because uh, there are many contradictions. You have the divides of the Cold War, you have the Sunni-Shia divide, you have now the divide among the Sunni community because of the Muslim Brotherhood. It's a threat to everybody's security. It's a global threat to peace and security with fighters from all over the world. And so it's time to f put aside the differences, put aside the contradictions, come together and make uh, make it uh, happen, make peace happen uh, in Syria, because we are no longer able to pick up the pieces. We are no longer able to clean up the mess. The humanitarian capacity is not enough for the dramatic needs we are facing. Antonio Guterres, thank you for joining us. Thank you.